What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out a Blender add-on that allows you to quickly add different effects to your materials inside of Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so Smartify Nodes is a brand new add-on specifically designed to help you add effects to your materials. You can see how it's really popular in the Blender market right now, so I thought it would be a good idea to go ahead and create a video about this. So uh, we're gonna jump over into Smartify Nodes tab real quick, and you can see how this talks a lot about how Smartify Nodes works, what it is, that kind of thing. And so this is designed to help you use nodes in order to quickly add things like moss blended with metal or um, just different surfaces that are kind of blended together. Um, so there's a lot of different stuff that you can do with this particular add-on. So one thing to note about this is there is also documentation. And so note that he has documentation as well as a YouTube playlist kind of walking you through how to use some of this and a Discord. Um, you're at least gonna wanna open up that documentation and take a look at this. And so this is gonna give you kind of a quick start on uh, different things that you can do in order to start adding these effects inside of Blender. But now let's go ahead and jump over into Blender. And so let's go ahead and let's jump over into Blender. And the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is install this. And so note that this isn't technically an add-on, it's more a collection of nodes that you're gonna to wanna to install in your asset browser. And so to do that, you're gonna to wanna to go to your edit preferences and you're gonna to wanna to go into your file paths right here. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a zip file that contains all of these different nodes and everything else. You're just gonna to want to unzip that and then you're going to want to reference that in your asset libraries right here. So you just click the plus button, go find that folder and then add it. Note that I've renamed this to assets, smartify nodes. You don't have to do that, but that's how I keep my stuff organized. I also changed my import method to append rather than append reuse data. So the changes don't get uh, don't get reflected back into um, your assets down in your asset browser. But once you do this, you can start adding these different nodes to your materials in order to start adding those effects. And so the first thing that I've been doing, um, the best window setup that I've found in order to do this is I create a new layout window like this. Because you're gonna be working so much with the nodes, um, I add a shader editor down here and then I add two windows over here. Um, so one is gonna be a 3D viewport, the other one is going to be the asset browser itself so that I can see the assets. And you can set these to tiny right here. But what this does is this gives you a window where you can have one of these in kind of like preview mode, one of these in rendered mode, and then you can access the shaders down here. Okay, and so there is a lot going on with this add-on. Um, I could make multiple different videos about the different effects in here, and I might do that if there's interest. When you first open it up, you might be a little bit overwhelmed. And so there's really two easy ways to get started with this add-on. The first is you can go down into your smart materials, and you can just drag a material onto your object. So for example, let's say that we wanted to drag this like alien growth material in here. You can just drag one of these smart materials onto an object and um, notice how it's gonna take a second to compile the shaders, but then once it's compiled the shaders, you can see how that material is going to be active on your object. And so the way that this add-on works is it works by adding these different nodes in here. So notice how when I brought this in here, it creates a couple different node groups. And those node groups are going to allow you to affect things like the alien growth, um, as well as the shader of the base material in here. And so basically, most of the options that you have for these materials are going to show up in these nodes. And so like, for example, you're gonna be able to do things like setting if you use the height to set where the, this growth is, right? And if you do, you can set your source height to use height, but then you can adjust things like the altitude, which is basically going to set at what level um, these materials start showing up in here, right? So you can set like the contrast, you can set the brightness of that height map, um, other things like that. You could also add some noise in here. Notice how if I add some noise, it's going to set if this material um, is strictly held to the altitude, other things like that. And so um, I don't wanna go too in depth on all of these different uh, settings right now. Like I said, I can get more in depth in the future, but you can 
drag these smart materials in here in order to quickly add materials to objects. And again, notice how when I drag this in here, this is gonna give me a couple different things that you can use in order to set things like the scale, other things like that. So each one of these is going to be a little bit different um, in the sense that they're going to have different options, but this is kind of how you're going to get started. And so in this case, right, you can adjust the facing controls and the facing controls are going to set where the um where the mossy material on this object is going to show up so notice how i can adjust these sliders in order to set where that's going to be you can also kind of set the direction that those are facing as well in order to get different effects in here so you can use this in order to quickly create these smart materials but generally what i recommend with something like this um, is i actually recommend you start not by using the smart materials but by building your own materials all right so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna jump back in my regular layout mode for just a second so you can see this so these are all pre-made materials right the smart materials that you can drag on here you can start messing around with um, they're ready to go and so you can definitely drag those onto your objects but the real power in here is you can actually build all of this yourself so what i want to do is i want to go into the smartify nodes section right here and notice how within the node groups section there's different shaders and and other things that you can add in here um, in order to build up your own custom shaders, right? So he's got he's got nodes that are designed to help you mix objects together. He's got um, nodes that are the smart shader nodes, which are basically gonna allow you to apply the materials, um, as well as different masks that you can use in order to mask different effects in here. And so let's say we wanted to build our own smart shader, right, on this Suzanne right here. So what I'm gonna do is instead of going into the smart materials, I'm gonna go into the smart shader section right here, and I'm gonna drag a smart shader onto my material. So I'm gonna start by creating a new material right here. And then I'm actually gonna delete out the BSDF because we're not gonna use that. And I'm gonna drag a smart shader in here like this. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna plug the shader into the surface, right? So if we look at this smart shader node, um, notice how it's basically just a collection of different options in here with inputs. And right now it's not actually doing anything. And so what we need to do is we need to start by bringing a texture in. And so there are a number of built-in textures down under texture sets that we can use. So let's say, for example, that we wanted to use one of these metal materials, right? So I'm gonna drag this metal material, which is a texture, into my shader editor right here, right? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect these nodes. One of the things that's kind of valuable is if you go up into your add-ons and you enable Node Wrangler right here, what that's going to do is that's going to add a bunch of different functionality to your shader editor. But now if I do an Alt, right click, drag, this is going to go find the right places for this to be hooked up. So notice how these hook up really quickly. That can be su super helpful when you're doing this because you do a bunch of hooking up of nodes in this, uh, in this add-on. But notice what we've done right now is we've set up that initial smart shader, right? And if I look at this, um, I've got this metal material plugged into my shader. Now let's say we wanted to adjust the size. Well, there's actually a smart, no, there's a, there's a smart, utility in here. There's options for either UV mapping or UV slash box mapping. I usually use the UV slash box mapping, but if I drag this in here, right, and I'm just gonna hold Alt and right click drag, um, notice how this is going to plug this in and it's gonna set up the mapping of your object. Well, when it sets up the mapping of your object, that means that you can come in here and you can adjust the scale of the material on the object, right? You can set the bigger and the smaller options in order to set how big this is just like this. And so we've adjusted our material on here using that mapping node. Well now, let's say that we wanted to add kind of a blend between two different materials, right? And so the way that we can do that is we can start by adding a mask and then we can add another material. So let's say for example, that we wanted to add, we'll go with an ambient occlusion mask. That's just gonna be a mask that kind of, uh, that kind of highlights the recesses of your object, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag the ambient occlusion map in right here. And 
notice how that gives me a completely different mask in here or a completely different object. Well, one of the things you can do with Node Wrangler enabled is you can do a shift control click. When you do a shift control click, what that's going to do is that's going to basically preview this with this object plugged into your output node right here. And then when you want to put it back, you can just do a shift control click again, and it's going to set this back up. You're actually going to want to be pretty good at that because you're going to do it a lot. But I'm going to do a shift control click. We'll notice what this does. And I want to do an alt right click drag right here just to make sure that this is actually mapped properly. But notice how I can come in here and I can adjust the ambient occlusion map like this. But what this does is this allows me to see what that mask is going to do, right? Well, now what I want to do is I want to do a shift control click in order to set this back up, but I want to mix these materials together. So what I want to do is I want to set this uh, ambient occlusion mask up where it tells us where something is going to show up in here. And so what I want to do is I want to add a second material. And so in order to do that, what I want to do is drag another smart shader node in here and another material. And then we're going to mix them together using this ambient occlusion mask. We've got this smart shader node in here. Well, for our second material, we want to add the rusty metal. Right, so I'm gonna click and drag right here in order to add the metal in here. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna do a right or an alt right click. I'm gonna drag this in here so that this sets the whole thing up. And I wanna make sure that the mapping is in here as well. And so I could come in here and do a shift control click in order to preview what that material is going to look like. Right, and so you can see how this material is more of a rusty material where the other one is more of a shiny material. And so now what I want to do is I want to mix these together. And so in order to mix these together, you want to go into your mixers section right here and notice how there's an option here for a shader mixer. And so what I can do is I can drag the shader mixer in here. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to take these two materials right and do an alt right click drag and drag them into this mixer node. And then I'm gonna drag this mixer node so that it's working in the material output right here. I wanna make sure this is dragged into my surface, but notice how after this is done compiling, see how I can use this mask in order to move back and forth between these different materials, right? Because they're both plugged in here. Well, then what we can do is within the mask, we wanna take our ambient occlusion, which we set up a second ago, Right, we want to click and drag that ambient occlusion mask into the mask right here. And now what that's going to do is that's going to use the location of the ambient occlusion in order to add this metal material. And then we can come in here and we can adjust this. Right, with the contrast, we could also adjust the location and the scale in here as well. But notice what that does is that starts adding that rusty material in certain different locations. And so say that you didn't like the ambient occlusion mask, say you wanted to do something different. All right, and so let's say that we wanted to try something different. Like let's say that we wanted the leaking mask in here, right? So that's going to basically mask this so the materials on the top versus on, are, are going to be blended based on uh, top and bottom locations, right? So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna drag this into the mask right here. You can see how what this one is going to do is this is going to mask out the top versus the bottom and the way that you can mix your materials that way. All right, and so once you get this one plugged in and you've adjusted your mask, notice how your materials are going to be placed in here based on that up and down location. Now, one thing I might recommend in this case is I'm probably going to swap these materials like this because I would like the rusty material to be more on the up direction, right? So I'm also going to crank that contrast up a fair amount, but notice how you can use this again in order to blend those different materials together. And if you guys are interested, we can definitely get more into this in a future video. But in general, that's how this is going to work, right? You're gonna combine these masks with multiple materials and also the mixers in here. Now, one other thing I did want to show you really quick is how you can use this to paint materials coming together. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this and I'm gonna to jump to another example.
All right, and so let's say you wanted to use a vertex paint to set where the different materials are. So notice how this is just a simple plane that I've created. It's got a fair amount of geometric detail in here, which is important because we're gonna do vertex painting on it. But notice how I've got the same setup I had in the other section, right? So I've got a material going into a smart shader here. I've got another material going into a smart shader here, and they're going into this mask node or this mix node. And so if I was to set this to 0.5, right? So just click in here and type in 0.5, then it's going to mix these together 50%, which isn't really what we want, right? What we want to do is we want to basically mask this out. So in some places, this rock texture shows up in some places, the other texture shows up. And so in this case, we want to go into our mixers and we want to drag a mask mixer node in here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to drag that in here. Then we're going to drag the mask into our mask right here. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna set this up where this mask mixer dictates where um, each one of these materials is going to show up, right? And so one thing that's a little bit weird about this, and I'm gonna zoom back in right here, is this max, mask mixer node has an input right here for paint, right? And so what we need to do is we need to drag a vertex color node in here. Now the vertex color node for whatever reason doesn't show up over here in your list. So what you need to do in order to get this vertex color node is notice how there's a node group that contains all of the Smartify nodes. So what you wanna do, and I'll drag this one out just so you can see, I'm gonna drag this in like this. This is basically gonna add a node group that shows you all of the different nodes. But if I tab into that, and I look over in my utilities, there's a vertex color node. So I wanna copy this. So I'm gonna right click and do a copy. Then I'm going to exit this group and I'm gonna do a paste, right? So I'm gonna do a control V right here. And so now what I have is I have a vertex color node that I can drag into the color right here. So I'm gonna drag color right here. And now what this is gonna do is this is going to reference a color attribute for vertices. And so in order to see the color attribute for vertices, you can come over here into your color attributes section of your um, data, your object data right here. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna delete this out and I'm gonna leave the other attribute in there for right now. But basically what we wanna do is we wanna create a new color attribute and in this case, I'm just gonna name this red green, right? I'm gonna click on okay. And we can go ahead and set our base color to a red right here and click on okay. So what we've done, right, is we've created a vertex color attribute. Well, now if I go into weight paint mode and I'm actually going to set this up so you can see the material, but over here, I want to go or not white paint mode, I wanna go into vertex paint mode. And what we wanna do is we wanna jump over into solid mode right here so that we can see these vertices. But basically the way that this works, right, is anywhere you paint green, it's going to place one material and anywhere else, or and anywhere it's painted red, it's not going to do that. Now, one thing we forgot to do is we want to go into our vertex color node right here, click on red, green. So that's just gonna reference this color attribute that we created. Well, now if we look at this, notice how this is going to start mixing the materials together based on the vertex painting that we did. And you wanna make sure that you set the paint override mask to one. And so now, notice you've got two different materials coming together wherever we've painted the green on our surface. So you can use this to paint the mix together um, between two different materials using this node setup right here. All right, so once you understand the nodes in this add-on, um, it's pretty cool the way that this all comes together. If you are interested, I can definitely create more videos on this. I'd just love to hear what you think about this add-on in the notes down below. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.